God bless you guys. Welcome back to another video of mine. I know it's been a while since I've posted, but in this video, I want to reflect upon me being 26 years old. Uh, today, I turned 27, and I want to reflect upon some of the lessons that I've had with the Lord um, in this past year, some of the failures, some of the successes, and hopefully this video can edify somebody that's listening. First lesson is that you always know that God is faithful. You always know that God is He's going to supply, that He's always going to come through. But there comes a time where you're unsure of yourself and you're unsure of the decisions you're going to make because you never stepped out into this level of faith before. You've never been into this territory, per se. And it's not until there that God is like reminding you and showing you over and over again, like, hey, I'm with you. What I've spoken to you is going to come to pass. I didn't speak these things in vain. And it's funny because in this life, you know, the Lord speaks to us one time. And we live every single day, there's 365 days a year. And during those days, the, the, the enemy speaks to us every single day. And God, say God spoke to us in January. But from January to March, the enemy's speaking over and over again. It comes to a point where you as a believer have to be so strong in your identity, so strong in what you believe, that no matter what the enemy tells you every single day, you're going to believe God and stand on God and overcome that situation that you're going through. So that's the first lesson that I've learned is that, yes, you know, you may be going through trials and tribulations. You may be going through times where you feel uncertain of yourself, but believe God and believe in the word that he has given you because he's always going to show up and he's going to show up on time and it's going to be perfect the way he's done it. A lot of times the Lord promises such beautiful promises. He speaks to us in such beautiful ways in our secret place, through prophets, through anything, whatever. But us being a little bit immature in our faith, being not having all the right knowledge, uh, counsel per se, um, we try to help God. And this is what happened with Abraham. The Lord has spoken to Abraham that he's going to have a kid. He's going to be a father of many nations. But Abraham, in his process of waiting, uh, went out and got, and got uh, Hagar and got her pregnant and had Ishmael. And through that story, I've learned that when you try to help God, it only ends up with problems in the future. And that's what happened with me this year. I tried to help God with certain areas in my life. I'm like, God, I'm believing you for this, um, but I'm going to go out in faith and I'm going to go get it. And God was literally showing me that, hey, CJ, I don't need your help. I just need you to be patient and endure. That's one of the biggest things that helped me this year is learning how to be patient, learning how to have endurance, learning how to be persistent in my faith because that is when the Lord moves in such a tremendous way. It's so easy to take on the burden yourself, but it's so hard to be like, God, I trust you. I'm waiting on you and I'm going to let you be God. You are my refuge. You are my rock. You are my salvation. You are the only hope that I have. So I'm going to trust in that and I'm going to have peace in that. And a lot of times while we wait, while we endure, Having the peace and joy of our salvation is so hard sometimes because we're waiting on the Lord to provide the lack or the, the, the need. And God is literally just molding something greater within us. And if we allow him to do that, it's so beautiful what's to come. And that's the second lesson that I learned is never try to help God to get the promises that he has already promised you. Just wait and endure. Third lesson is never compromise who you are. Always be yourself. Um, this year, I've had a lot of people speak um, against me, speak out, make fun of me, mock me, uh, laugh at me. Basically, they don't see me as the person that God has, the way God sees me. They don't see me as a person and child of God. They just see me as CJ. The regular kid. And at first, your first reaction, your gut reaction, reacting in the flesh, this brings in a resentment, a frustration, and kind of an anxiety to be around certain people because you know how they feel about you. And you know that God speaks to you and, you know, you're not dumb. <laughs> you know what I mean? And these are the things that the Lord has shown me, like, they're speaking out against you. They're mocking you. They're laughing at you. CJ, because... I'm trying to bring you to your knees. I'm trying to bring you to a place in the secret place where you're in such a place in your heart and your soul that what they say don't, it doesn't even bother you. Like you're not offended by it because you know what I've said about you and you know that I am with you. So 
in this process of, you know, a lot of slander, a lot of this, a lot of that, I've learned that if I start to pray for these people and I start to see these people from God's perspective, that, you know, that they're people of God that needs that need prayer, that need help, that need um, a word of encouragement, because a lot of people have traumas. A lot of people have been hurt. A lot of people speak on past experiences and they try to project that onto you in your future and who you are. And the Lord showed me that you need to start praying for these people in these areas in their lives because I'm trying to do something one with you, but also two with them in the future. With your life, CJ, like where you are right now, I'm going to speak to you. And I'm going to speak through you and I'm going to show up in such a tremendous way that they are going to have to look within themselves. They're going to have to see the, the, the things that are within them and deal with that. So that's lesson number three. That if people mock you, if people slander you, if people laugh at you, this is bringing you to your knees so that God can bring out the purpose and the purposes and bring the man, the, the man of God that he has called you and created you to be. He's bringing you closer to that. He's pushing, he's pushing you towards that direction. He's, he's refining you and taking away things that, that don't please him and don't honor him. And he's making you more and more into his character. Number four, knowledge is power. And the more you know, the more you allow God to grow and move in certain areas in your life. In my past, I felt I felt hopeless in a lot of areas of my life. I felt defensive. I felt like I couldn't do anything because I didn't have the right knowledge and the right wisdom and discernment and, and principles of God in my life. Even the identity that who I am that didn't allow me to make certain decisions and I would feel these emotions of helplessness and and I couldn't do anything and defeated because I didn't have these knowledge, these principles, these these God ordained things that really allow you to move. And I feel like in this walk, the more you move with God, the more knowledge you have, the more understanding, the more of the principles and identity that you have, you can really go out with your faith and God will show you go this way. But you also have to trust God and know that God is going to tell you to stop and redirect you to this way. Because in the book of Proverbs, the Lord says that the purpose of man is within him, but is the counsel of many or the counsel of godly men that bring it out. So you have to trust with the team that you have around you, your inner circle, the people that you trust with the most that are, you know, led by the Holy Spirit, love God, you know, people of faith that you could go to with, with you know, heavy things, that they will lead you and give you godly advice and have the Lord speak to them um, to, to, to move in certain areas of your life, to bring out the purpose and, and the gifts that God has given you. So the knowledge you have um, really, really makes a difference because before I used to fold, before where I used to try to do so many things and I would fail and I would fail and I thank God for my failures, but I would fold and through my failures, I've learned so much. I've gained so much wisdom. I've gained so much um, perspective. I've, it's a humbling experience to fail with God because you know that one, timing is his, right? You're on his timing. And two, you know that it's going to come, but he's showing you how to do it a more better way, a more effective way, a more way that involves people and not just do it yourself. And um, these are the things that I'm learning with my walk with God. Number five, always to share your faith. And I spoke about this earlier in the year in a, one of my other videos is that I wanted to make a goal of mine to share my faith, to, to, to share my testimony, to, to speak about the gospel of Christ and, and the good news that, you know, we have been redeemed, we have a savior. And I've done that, not to the level where I feel like I should, because you always feel like you could do more, but I've done it. And, um, you really don't know how much your your testimony impacts somebody. You speaking about Christ. And I always say this, this is a big saying of mine, is that your past is someone else's present. So what you've gone through in your past, someone is living through right now. So if you don't speak upon that, if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to move with you, to share your testimony, share your faith, share the gospel, uh, certain people could stay in certain change. And I'm not trying to say that to manipulate and you know keep you, like share your testimony with everybody. But what I'm saying is, is that speak. If the Lord leads you to speak, speak. Encourage somebody. Share your testimony because this is going to empower a lot of people. The more we love, the more we show the love of God, the more we just show kindness and compassion with people, 
you know, it really does make a difference. Um, this last, just a quick testimony. Uh, you know, Thanksgiving was a week ago, a week and a half ago. And we took in basically all the homeless of my town here. Um, they all stay in like one remote you know, location. We picked them up in cars and we brought them to our church. And then within our church, we basically fed them all. We had like Thanksgiving for them. We had a whole bunch of food. They all ate, they all had a good time. They, you know, we were able to not just share the gospel with them, but just show them what love is as well. Like we acted it out as well. It's not just saying, I love you. It's not just saying, Jesus loves you. It's a really an act of compassion, an act of love, an act of service. Love really does make a difference. So these are the five things that the Lord has shown me throughout this year, some of my successes and some of my failures. Um, I hope this encourages somebody. Keep going. Be persistent with your faith. Don't give up. The enemy always wants you to be quiet. That's one thing he wants to stop is your praise and your worship towards God. If you are persistent, if you seek the Lord continually and have like it says in the Psalms, you're just continually worshiping and praising him. You're provoking God to move in your life. So I want to encourage you guys to don't give up. Be persistent. You know, start having good habits. Wake up every day and start those good habits. Replace the bad habits that you have with good habits. And just trust in the Lord and the Lord is going to show up tremendously. This is my video here. I'm excited for what the Lord is going to do in my 27th year. And... Um, Thank you guys. Thank you for listening and tuning in.